Get in, bitch. Leslie can't drive and we're going the wrong way. I've only grown up in this area and have been to the lighthouse countless times. Let me make a wrong turn and then I'll cut somebody off because Jersey mood. <laughs> Jersey was actually known as Monmouth County, which is why when you're doing research on the American Revolution and the battles and the war at the shore here in Jersey, sometimes things seem a little bit confusing because they'll refer to like Forked River as a part of Monmouth County or Monmouth County Incorporated. Anyway, New Jersey is the perfect microcosm of the American Revolution. We have loyalists, we have patriots, and we have my favorite, the Notorious Pine Robbers, which eventually morph into the popularized Barnegat Pirates. On today's episode, we are taking a look at the plunderous, murdering, bloodthirsty John Bacon. Captain John, if you will, because supposedly at one time he like commanded some like whaling boats, which was a very popular way for people to make money here on the Barnegat Bay and Barnegat Sea Coast. Barnegat was actually discovered by famed explorer Henry Hudson when in the 1600s in his boat the Half Moon he comes up the Barnegat Bay as he's exploring all of the, the coastal sea line and he calls it Berendigat or inlet with little breakers because it was like a nice little refuge and spot where the seas weren't too choppy for himself and his men eventually that name will morph over time with the with the translation being in like maps and things like that and so that's where we get the modern construct of Barnegat, New Jersey. <laughs> Southern Monmouth County, or now it's Ocean County, um, these men would rob, plunder, steal, kill, do whatever they had to do in order to financially keep themselves afloat, especially towards the end of the war. So Bacon really becomes prevalent in the 1780s. His name first appears in like history books or ledgers in the 1770s. 1775, I think, is the earliest like instance that we have of John Bacon. He was a um, is like a wandering worker or laborer. Uh, they said he was a captain of like some whaling ship, but there was like nothing of mark to note. But here, men would try to take, steal, loot, plunder, whatever they could in order to survive because the war was devastating financially, especially in New Jersey. We have like all these major battles that are fought here, Trenton, Princeton, Monmouth, um, with all of these other little skirmishes that occur on the coastline here, where we're gonna show you in a little bit. And so people would do what they had to do to survive. Um, particularly this area of New Jersey was rich in salt. So they would harvest the salt in salt marshes and salt could be used to preserve food and other things like that. They would sell it. And Bacon was just looking to make a quick bang for his buck. So whatever it took, whoever's throat he had to slit, as you're gonna find out at the lighthouse, was what he would do in order to survive. Bacon raided the area between Tuckerton, which was known as Clamtown, New Jersey at the time, all the way up to Cedar Creek, which is like modern day Bayville. The first instance of John Bacon and his raids took place actually in Forked River at the homestead of a man by the name of John Holmes. 
Holmes apparently had quite a bit of cash and other possessions on him on his farmstead, and so Bacon, while he was a shingle maker, was scoping out the property. It was on that night, or one night, that he goes up to Holmes with a bayonet and approaches him asking for his belongings. Holmes, interesting colonial tidbit, didn't have any of those belongings on him or any type of money. In fact, if you were wealthy in the colonial era, you buried your possessions. But thanks to Holmes' wife, who had a few spare coins on her, that put Bacon at bay enough to where he just retreated and made aware of the Burlington and Monmouth County militia of his starts to raid and also now to be on the lookout for the pine robbers of New Jersey. It's December of 1781. By this point, Bacon already has a price on his head. He was indicted by a Monmouth County grand jury for taking money from the Burlington County collector. Now we're here in Manahawkin at the Old Baptist Church located right off of Route 9, and this is the site of the Manahawkin skirmish. So knowing that he was in the area, there was a group of Burlington County militia that had set up here looking under uh, the command of Randolph, looking for Bacon and his men gets late at night, the men fall asleep, they decide to set up a few entries, and lo and behold, Bacon stumbles upon them. A skirmish incurs where Bacon's men greatly outnumbered the Patriot militia, and so they fire, and one man was killed, this becoming known as the Manahawkin Massacre. <laughs> It was here in October of 1782 where Bacon would earn his nickname Bloody John Bacon. There was a Dutch boat that had run aground right off of the coast here and on it were 20,000 pounds worth, that's dollars for us Americans, of British tea. Andrew Steelman, a patriot at the time, was able to capture and take the booty from the old Dutch boat and it was Steelman and his men that fell asleep on the beaches here outside of their boat the alligator. Well as it turns out Bacon had wind that there was a good landfall of money and tea here on the beaches and so once the men fell asleep he slit all of their throats but Bacon let a few of those men go so that when they headed back to wherever they came from they would say that they lived through the attack of bloody John Bacon. We're on our way to the Cedar Bridge Tavern. What I love about this is it's like this little off the beaten path place here in Barnegat, New Jersey. Last shots, supposedly, of the American Revolution fired here a skirmish, but um, we're off road in. I love this because if you look out at the road, right, like this is what Bacon and the Loyalists and, and his men, Shreve, was the patriot that was trying to track down Bacon at the time, um, would have seen. Like, none of this has changed, so it's like you're really stepping back in time. Step right up. Let me pour you a cold one and tell you about how John Bacon ended the American Revolution with a skirmish here in Barnegat, New Jersey. So behind me is the Cedar Bridge Tavern, and it was here in December of 1782 that a uh, Burlington County militiaman by the name of Captain Shreve and his men actually stopped to have a drink. And knowing the bacon was in the area, they were on the lookout. Remember, there's that bounty on his head. Bacon gets wind of it, and he ends up cornering Shreve and his men. When Bacon thinks that he's almost going to be caught, it is a local group of people in Barnegat that fire shots back at Shreve and his men, injuring a few and killing a few others. It is here, supposedly, that the last shots of the American Revolution are fired, technically since it was a skirmish, but it makes for a great story, and we're going to find out what happens to Bacon next. Bacon met his very gruesome death in April of 1783, so about 12 miles south of here. Um, he's drinking in a bar, as pine robbers often did. And uh, the Burlington County Militia was like hot on his trail. They come up to him. Now the great part is like there's only one account that I've researched where Bacon's death is like noted and it's through like a secondary source. So who knows if this is true, but it just adds more to the aesthetic of John Bacon, if you will. Um, supposedly he is shot no, lies. He's bayoneted first, then shot. Then, like, while he is bayoneted, he, like, 
fake faints and then like gets up and they shoot him and then they finally bring him the body out to Mount Misery to be inspected where they're like yeah he's dead voila bayonet wound and bullet wound and then out of nowhere John Bacon's brother shows up to reclaim the body so what they were going to do was they were going to bury Bacon's body say that five times fast at a crossroads so that his heart and soul would never be at rest um but this just kind of adds to like the allure of John Bacon and like these pine robbers that were in this area I love it because like there's no known sketches of him some records that I've read said that he was married some records that I read said that he had kids others say no that he was like a lone vengeance but the one thing I will say that stuck with me about Bacon that I love and if you name your boat after it you better give me the credit is that apparently the vessel that he used to raid everybody on was known as the hero's revenge. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Leslie Scherenbeck, the History Chick. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and get ready because on a very memorial edition of the History Chick, we're bringing it forward for score and checking out a little unknown cemetery in Finns Point, New Jersey that buried Confederate dead. Did you ever know that there were two New Jerseys? Not north and south, sorry 201 area codes, but it was actually east and west Jersey. And right here in Barnegat is the dividing line. That thing's a turkey, look at it. It is, it's a wild turkey. Big ass bird. Bird, I'm gonna roll down the window. Uh, should we gobble at it? Yeah, that's a turkey. Yeah. This thing's giving up in here, son. You've got a couple more months. I want to address, like, as a burgeoning YouTuber, I can't even handle that I was bullied. I was bullied by grown adults at the Barnegat Lighthouse. If you're watching this vlog, shame on you, for making animal esque noises in the background of my video, which I then had to wait until you pulled away in your Hyundai Sonata. Cool choice, bro. Really? Stop buzzing.